Hello everyone. This is Rakesh Chugani from Career Naksha as a counseling executive here live with you all. Today's speaker we have is Subin John Matthew. Talking about him, he is a renowned clergy and a motivational speaker, a counseling psychologist and a psychotherapist. He is currently pursuing his doctoral studies from Senate of Serampore. Expertise in family therapy, individual counseling, premarital counseling, depression, and anxiety disorders. He has completed his MBA and worked in MNC as HR post theological studies, had served among the Adivasi and the communities. During COVID 19, started practicing counseling. He, uh, sta he started practicing counseling. He is a registered counselor and a life member of Counselors Council in India. So, here we have Subin John Matthew. His topic of discussion today is how to overcome exam fear. So, handing it to over, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Rakesh. It's a great moment for me to be the part of our career naksha and at the same time to deal with the topic on how to overcome the fear of exam. It's a tough time for almost all the parents, the youngsters who are appearing for exam during this time. And as a counselor, I feel that it's essential for people like us to pitch in and help the students who are preparing themselves for their board exams and other competitive exams as well. For me, counseling has become a passion. And through that, I have experienced that a push, a pat can make a great difference. And on that particular attempt, I take this opportunity to present this topic. What is all about exam? Why do people fear about exam? What can be done to overcome such fear? We often feel that exams can make a person and at the same time can break a person. For next few minutes, I will be dealing with the topic on how to overcome exam fear. All that what we have to do is keep our mind, our vision open and with the perspective of positive mind or being an optimistic person, we need to tackle such situations. At this time, what is fear all about or why do we have an fear during exam? Let me start with my own example. I have wrote many exams in my life. At a point, even I was afraid of exam or I had fear of exam. It went to uh, a different level and I experienced panic, fear or palpination as such. And there are different levels further too. And that is what I'm going to talk during this session. I hope I will get certain, uh, I'll get many feedbacks. There will be certain doubts, questions or discussions that will happen on the floor and or offline as well. I'll be there around to connect to each of you if you are in need of help. Firstly, we need to understand what is the cause of fear. 
there are many reasons for the fear that is built within us on attempting an exam it could be lack of preparation we might be wasting time or focusing on many other things it can be distractions involvement in other activities taking things for granted i'm not taking each of the points and uh, elaborating it because these are some things which you are all aware of it could be distractions like involving in more of uh, online games or tv shows or internet spending time chit chatting with friends girlfriends involving in family matters it can be on the positive side as well might be there are people who love to play music or play cricket or football and they involve more of their time into that and then at the end of the day they analyze they understand that they haven't prepared thinking that you can learn by the end of the year just before the exams but unfortunately you might have a fall break your hand or leg or hurt yourself and then the fear causes there are many things that can be a cause of fear we need to identify what is the fear factor that i am there are many more fear factors we'll be surely dealing with that before that i want to tell you what an exam can do in your life because we are dealing with the exam fear of exam what happens with an exam that you attempt you know what happens it uh, builds excess worry about upcoming exams we try to build a fear within of what happens if my first exam is tough then the second is more tougher and the third is more tougher and then we try to pull ourselves back we fear of being evaluated like others would be judging us mostly our parents do this they will tell to our uh, youngsters you know the children that watch the neighbor's son or watch your friend or watch your elder brother or your elder sister how they have performed and what are you doing okay this fear of evaluation would be happening during exam the fear of apprehension about the consequences what if i fail what if i don't perform well what if my marks are less what if my gradings are low will i get an admission in the college or the field of interest or my favorite field which i am interested in these are some things which might trouble us these are very normal and experienced by many students so need not think that fear of exam is something or exophobia is something that is uh, happening to you alone no it is for happening to many people many students there was one student who walked up to the uh, exam hall and uh, all of a sudden he had a blank out he was not able to recollect anything and you know by the end the student couldn't control his natural call and he passed urine in the class itself these are the extreme or the levels of fear that can be built so what is the fear or how is the fear that we are tackling with what is the result of such fear as i said many research research shows that parental pressure is associated with greater fear thus irrelevant thoughts and stronger bodily symptoms relating to anxiety during an exam other causes for test anxiety 
may include fear of failure, procrastination, and previous poor test performances. To conclude, I would say with the result of fear that it can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression. It can lead to multiple disorders. It can even lead to threat to life. For the society, exam, the result of the exam shows that the success of the individual. But for the individual, the result of the exam can lead to anxiety, depression, multiple disorders, threat to life. They can even attempt suicide even before the result of the exam comes. So identify the level or the grade of the fear that you are going through. And is the fear having such results, then you need to take a step to overcome such fear in your life. Next, I want to talk about the symptoms of fear over exams. What sort of symptoms can we identify? There are physical symptoms. There are emotional symptoms. There are behavioral cognitive symptoms. Let's take one by one. The physical symptoms you can identify as headache, migraine, sinus, giddiness, nausea, diarrhea, excessive setting, sweating, shortness of breath, rapid heartbeat, lightheadedness, and feeling of faint can occur, a feel that we might faint off. Thus, anxieties can lead to panic attacks, which is the abrupt onset of intense fear or discomfort in which individuals may feel like they are unable to breathe or having a heart attack. Identify the physical symptoms if you are going through an exam and you are having any sort of fear within you. If you are having excess of headache or nausea or giddiness or uh, sinus or migraine or um, panic attacks, then you need to understand that it is because of the fear that is built through the exam that you are going to attend. If you are able to identify the symptoms and relate it with the fear over the exam that you are going to tackle, you can take care of yourself, reach to a medical practitioner, a doctor, and consult to give certain vitamins or tablets or uh, checkup of uh, overall health and help you to overcome such things. Secondly, the emotional symptoms. You know, we often try to identify the physical symptoms, but there are emotional symptoms as well that can be identified and we might, which we might often often ignore, saying that uh, this is natural or this is something which is um, uh, created by the individual. The symptoms are feeling of anger. You know, uh, just because you are not able to perform through the exam or because of the uh, fear of the exam, you try to portray the anger. It's called, uh, it's like we are hiding our fear and projecting anger. Vice versa, because you are angry on yourself and you can't project the anger, you try to portray emotional feelings or pour out feelings like fear. 
helplessness. You try to withdraw from the community. You try to be uh, isolated and disappointed. Disappointment are the emotional responses to the fear of exam. If parents who are listening to me are able to identify certain such emotional symptoms within your children, please take time, spend time with your children, talk to them, and it would be good if you can reach out to a psychotherapist or a psychologist and help them to overcome the fear of our exam. Thirdly, the behavioral or the cognitive symptom. What happens is the first two may be slightly involving around the individual and the third can attack the cognitive level of the individual. Many people, many children come up to me and say that they have difficulty in focusing or concentrating. They have different thoughts, they think negatively, and they themselves compare with others and others uh, who are having common symptoms. And they try to relate with them and they try to withdraw themselves and they ignore the fear of exam. They take things for granted. They know that they are not able to concentrate. They are not worried. They just leave it off. They try to compare themselves with others as well. See, my friend is not able to focus. I am not able to focus, which means the teacher is not teaching properly. So they try to project the problem on the other and they make excuses. You parents need to identify certain behavioral changes or the symptoms in the students. Teachers need to identify that. There are many things that can happen in front of our eyes and we often ignore these things. There are all possibilities that individual can have all the three symptoms as well. And if you are not able to identify that the child, the student is having these symptoms of fear over exams, you know what? The student is taken for a toss. It is at this point that an elderly person a faculty or a teacher or a counselor or a medical practitioner or a, um, a family doctor can be of help. Not only with the students who are appearing for board exams, my dear friends. Now I'm talking about the elders as well. People who are preparing for NEET exam, for engineering, or MBBS, competitive exams, civil exams post-graduations, and above. You know, there was a client that I had to deal with. This client was from North India. She was preparing for her uh, post-graduation uh, uh, after her medicine studies. And every day she used to have panic attacks. Every day she used to have uh, uh, fear within of the result. Yes, there were many reasons behind it. She had lost her father during her exam for her final uh, MBBS. And then she's preparing for her uh, post-graduation studies. And she has a boyfriend. There are many things around it. But her focus was not into the exam that she was going to prepare. And then she was disturbed, she was distracted. She had lots of problems she was dealing with. And uh, I remember that every 
second or the third day i had to take up a counseling session to her give her a counseling session and help her to overcome that fear completely as a psychologist we help the students with uh, meditation exercise yoga therapies there are many cognitive therapies that can be used or many uh, uh, um, counseling techniques that can be used to help such uh, uh, or to overcome such fear and once we identify these symptoms in the individual moving on to the next slide what is the purpose of exam do we have a purpose of our exam yes obviously there is an ex purpose exam has a purpose you know uh, in my childhood i felt exam is something which is going to judge me but later i realized that exam help me helps me to identify the strengths in me the weakness in me how prepared am i how punctual am i how oriented am i goal oriented am i to uh, develop dreams to develop goals yes exam plays a vital role so i would say exam has a purpose the result will give a turning point to achieve our dreams and goals i remember my brother wanted to uh, had a dream of amy uh, of becoming a, a air force pilot and um, he had gone through uh, NDA exams and then he had gone through uh, CDS exams and then he went to the selection and uh, at a point the selection he was rejected through the selection process and there he decided to have a different goal and he has decided to become a IT professional similarly exams can help us to achieve our dreams to turn our dreams to build a dream to aim high aim and have goals if you are preparing for an exam ask yourself what is the dream that you have what is the desire that you have what is the ambition that you have if you are able to write down at least two or three dreams two or three desires or two or three ambitions of yourself you know the exam that you're preparing will give a turning point to achieve will be a turning point to achieve your dreams and your goals now the easiest part how do we learn or how did we learn for your exams Yes, there are many ways that we have tried to prepare for our exam. We attended classes, we interacted with our teachers, we have classroom study, we have online classrooms or we have uh, uh, offline classroom, the virtual classrooms. We used various materials from question bank to guide to various other um, materials were used by us we attended tuitions we learned from our friends we tried to um, have a combined study we tried to ask doubts from our questions or we are friends uh, from ask doubts with our friends or the, our friends would be able to explain certain uh, formulas or certain concepts to us in a very easy manner Last but not the least, anytime we have an online uh, tool, go Google or any other uh, uh, scholarly websites can be used. So uh, we are learning. Learning is a process. It's not that we haven't learned anything. It's not that we didn't prepare anything. But one thing here that i want to say is identify the best tool that is required for you
I remember I used to hate mathematics during my eighth standard. Till seventh standard, I was able to deal with it properly. But during my eighth standard, mathematics was something which I uh, really started to hate. During my ninth standard, a mathematics teacher by name Sri Vallabha Charelu, my school uh, mathematics teacher as well, asked me to come down to take tuitions at his house. I was literally afraid and hated this subject so much that I felt uh, even this master is going to waste his time taking interest in me. You know, the way he related me to mathematics and then my mathematics uh, school teacher, uh, Mrs. Uh, Vargis ma'am, they both made me involved in mathematics so much that during those years, I don't think I ever thought of having even a girlfriend because I started loving mathematics so much. Yeah, jokes apart, but I'm trying to say that there would be certain people who will involve, who will put in interest into you if you can allow them to mint you. So identify the best resource that you can have within your limitations, within your society, within your school or your college circle. You know, the way that I started learning mathematics, even today, I at least play two to three games of Sudoku to keep my mind fresh, to refresh my mind. So what I'm trying to say is we will have many resources around us. Try to pick the best and try to involve your time with the best faculty that you can or the resource that you can and i'm very sure that you will love this subject which you hated the most moving on to the next slide our process for success everyone does have a process for success not that we haven't invested our time just like that Every person who is successful has certain patterns, a certain process. The process that I followed, the process that many uh, successful people have uh, followed, I try to brief it up and put it across in this slide. The first thing is have a timetable. Timetable doesn't mean the seven hours uh, period timetable, no. I try to say timetable means from the time that you are that you wake up to the time you go back to your bed. Every minute has to be calculated and set well. Say from morning five o'clock, you are going to have your daily psych uh, timetable from five o'clock to night. 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, set that time in a very oriented way. Most of you might have started it already. That's good. But if some of you are yet to start, write to dates, now itself. Take a sheet of paper and write down a timetable. 5 to 6 or 5 to 5.50, I will be reading this particular subject. It's good to use uh, the early hours for subjects like mathematics and science. Languages can be brought down during the evening hours. If you find uh, you're having difficulty with um, mathematics and science, it's good that you can invest some more time in the evening hours as well. Because uh, usually what happens is people fear mathematics and science. Secondly, uh, do not ignore languages when you are preparing for board exam because um, your overall rating scores would fall 
if you take languages for granted, especially people who are born and brought up outside, uh, uh, who has good uh, hand on lang languages like Hindi and English, please ensure that at least half an hour a day you will be able to take uh, time for your languages. Half an hour to 45 minutes. You can take maximum one and a half hour to two hours a stretch to one subject, provided you take proper intervals as well. Don't take too long intervals, not more than five minutes to 10 minutes. I know there are many people who take a break, but uh, uh, the break would be so long that they will not be able to return back to their books. So ideal tool for therapy is, uh, or to, for setting interval is a two minutes break. Keep a two minutes break when you want, go back to your studies. Say it's like you study for half an hour or 45 minutes, take a two minutes break. Or if you're really having a systematic timetable, you can take five minutes to 10 minutes break, come back to your books, start reading. Give equal time to uh, all the subjects. Give priority to all your subjects. Thirdly, uh, take model exams. Uh, mock exams. Do not think that the model exams and mock exams are just a waste of time. No, you will get a hand on uh, on your exams and you will be able to identify how much time are you able to invest in each questions. So which uh, 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 questions uh, need more of your time. Say, for example, if you are preparing for competitive exams, you fear that you need more time for algorithms or you need more time for uh, reasoning or you need more time for uh, paraphrasing and attending the paragraph uh, questions, and you will be able to identify that. Always uh, prepare short notes and concise notes. Um, you know, there is a simple tool that I want to give or uh, the method that I practiced is I used to prepare my answers with abbreviations. Uh, say, for example, uh, how does a business organization work? So what is essential for a business uh, organization to work? There is something called post-corp. We try to say planning, organizing, the technology, the supply, the uh, resources. So we'll have to abbreviate it. The SWOT analysis, identify the uh, subjects that are easy for you, the subjects that are difficult for you, the subjects that gives you more marks, give you, uh, can become a threat for your scoring. So identify that and invest proper time for that. And try to build your answers like uh, with abbreviations. For example, again, if I want to say, um, uh, use the word uh, cup, C-U-P, and uh, the answer can be controlling or uh, commanding or something like that. And you are trying to write a paragraph on what uh, uh, command is. And then you say, the, I use the uh, alphabet U and then P, and then so something like that, which will help you to build certain uh, short notes for you. And always uh, try to use a um, paper like this, fold it in two and try to make notes on one side, one answer, the second side, the second answer, the third side, the third answer, fourth answer. And like that, you can file the, you can keep it like this, five to 10 papers for one subject, and then you can easily refer, go back and refer to such notes.
third uh, fourth uh, fifthly is the exercise and meditation that is required you know um, uh, we need to have a proper exercise to our body at least uh, 15 to 30 minutes in the morning and 15 to 30 minutes in the evening yoga is a good tool uh, jogging walking playing table tennis or shuttle badminton or uh, running within or doing a treadmill anything anything that can uh, take your 15 to 30 minutes will help you to uh, relax and strengthen your body as well lastly sleep and diet a minimum of five hours of sleep is essential for those who are preparing for exams uh, i used to sleep for two to four hours but it's very risky and very dangerous i wouldn't suggest uh, to take such a risk but five hours to six hours of sleep can help a person at the same time have a proper diet do not skip meals have proper diet uh, eight one eight pattern eight o'clock you're in the morning you're having your breakfast eat again at one o'clock eat your dinner supper at eight o'clock so follow that pattern diet have a diet properly include more of fruits avoid junk foods do not carry any bakery food with you even biscuits can spoil your appetite can spoil your health so don't go for anything that you get to buy from outside try homely food ask your parents to cook for you and better avoid eating food directly from refrigerator i know we get tempted to eat anything that is in the refrigerator with a cold because of the humid uh, hot climate out there but please avoid such things it can spoil your appetite and uh, add more of um, dry fruits like uh, badam pista uh, or any such uh, dry fruits can help you keep badam soaked in water have a few badams early morning uh, 5 or 6 a.m empty stomach or along with your uh, breakfast have a boiled egg have milk eat well have a good diet and i'm very sure that this process will lead you to success moving on to the next slide what can be the future through the exams there was a point uh, at a time where i thought that it would have been nice if there were no exams at all later i felt exams has a future too you know, uh, we can change our ambitions. We can freeze our ambitions. We can aim higher. Exams helps us to build short-term goals. Exams helps us to bring build long-term goals. Exams uh, gives us rewards and recognitions. Uh, ambition, for example, I want to become a doctor I'm um, 15 years old so your ambition is set for next five to seven years so within this five to seven years how are you going to become a doctor is it a mbbs doctor that you want to become or is it a um, uh, scholarly doctorate that you want to get, uh, get? So freeze a short term goals like from uh, 15 to 17 years, I will be doing my uh, intermediate or my plus two studies. And then I will be doing my uh, graduation or MBBS. So that moves to the long term goals. So two to three years can be your short term goals and three to five years can be your long term goals. So set certain goals at least for five years uh, and in between if you feel that you couldn't achieve your short-term goal or your long-term goal is not achievable you can 
change your long-term goal to plan A to plan B. Uh, often, uh, as a management student, we often say that we should at least have two uh, plans in our life, plan A and plan B. So uh, plan it accordingly and try to set goals in your life. Always remember, exams comes with rewards and recognitions. You will have the reward. We need not be in the form of a mark, but it can be. Uh, it need not be in the form of a grade, but it can be even through the package that you can get. In my graduation, I hardly had a fifty-six percentage. In my post graduation, I had a nearly seventy percentage. During my higher studies and forward, when I look, I have more than 70% of gray, uh, uh, overall percentage. So what I'm trying to say is uh, those exams which you are appearing will surely give you a better future. So don't uh, fear for your exam. Don't be afraid of the exam that you are attempting or you are preparing. Okay. Uh, try to always uh, wait for better results and recognitions and rewards that are waiting for you. After my post-graduation uh, and uh, master's in business administration, I was offered to work with Oracle India. I was offered to work with uh, a automatic data processing private limited company. I was offered to work with um, a company called uh, Gallup Tech dot com in uh, texas dallas there are many offers that we get so uh, the rewards and recognitions are always waiting for you so be hopeful for me i chose the path to help uh, serve the people uh, the society and that's why i quit the multinational company organization jobs and i chose to serve among the poor the poorest in the society i have been working among the dalits adivasi communities as a missionary evangelist and as a uh, organizer as a managing director administrator and so on and now i'm involved in doing counseling sessions as a psychologist as a psychotherapist i'm involved in dealing with the uh, people who are having anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, are uh, having more, more, most of family issues or crisis, individual crisis, work pressure, and so on and so forth. I'm always around uh, reachable online, on my number, on WhatsApp, or any social networking sites that you can uh, access to. I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Insta as well. I'll be there to help uh, anyone who is seeking help to overcome their exams in the days ahead who are preparing for exams. I wish all the best for all of you who are preparing for your exams. Do well, prepare yourself, give your best. You are the best. God bless you. Uh, I'm concluding. If you have any questions or discussions or feedbacks, Please uh, feel free to write to me at dot com or nine nine eight nine eight one one zero zero. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for the session uh, as we stop the session rakesh uh, are you in do we have any uh, chat questions or any discussion to share we can take up uh, no sir there is just one comment very informative session thank you sir. thank you yeah okay so yeah uh thank you so much sir for uh, it was a great opportunity for you uh, i mean for us to have you here and uh we would like to have you again and thank you so much for all the viewers signing off as rakesh Ragani from career naksha thank you thank you thank you so much